So when I think about my America, I think about how it's changed. I came to the practice of law back in 1975 in, in the Woodlawn Neighborhood Legal Assistance Program. Uh, I, I then went to Cairo, Illinois with the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. And, and I saw the struggle of ordinary people against the huge machinery of the law. Uh, and since 1977, uh, almost now 30 years, uh, I've committed myself to the representation of persons charged with crime, the pariahs of society. And, and, and the lessons that I've learned from this kid in the Jewish home with liberal values to today are amazing. But still, in my America, we don't torture. In my America, we don't execute. In my America, we don't lie. And we don't lie so often that the lie becomes transposed into the truth. That's what my America stood for. The kind of law that... The kind of law that, that, that I practice is a struggle. Uh, you know, I don't represent corporations or banks or institutions. I'm proud to say that the only institution I've ever represented in 30 plus years of practicing law was the Board of Deacons of a church. Uh, I, I, I represent people. And that kind of practice is a struggle, a struggle to maintain a client's sense of dignity, a struggle to force an often unwilling system to see the world through different eyes, a struggle to replace violence with compassion. Uh, throughout my life as a lawyer, I I've held on to the belief that a lawyer standing for justice could make a difference both in the courtroom and on the street. In my life's work, I refuse to believe that it is futile to stand up and be heard. I refuse to believe that. And I refuse to believe that it is futile for you to stand up and be heard. Quite to the contrary, our voices can drown out the voices of a tyrant. And on October 5th, and on October 5th we will stand up, and our collective voices will drown out the voice of a tyrant. The fear of futility will have no place in this movement. None of us in this room will be immobilized by the fear of futility or the enormity or complexity of the challenge ahead of us. To the contrary, we should take great strength in the complexity and the enormity of our task. George W. Bush and his administration have begun the systematic dismantlement of my America. And I and you cannot stand silent or be silenced. We cannot be silent in the face of the dismantlement of our America. Enough is enough, or as my family would say, Diana. Enough is enough is enough, <laughs> Diana. And frankly, the world can't wait to drive the Bush administration out of office. Bush and his advisors, Cheney, Rumsfeld, Rice, uh, Rove, and others, have lied. They lied to us repeatedly. They're unremorseful in their lying, with the sickening notion that if the lie is repeated often enough, it will take on the power of truth. Bush and his advisors have created a secret prisons in Eastern Europe and today admit to the secret prisons in Eastern Europe in violation of international law and violation of treaty law and much to the embarrassment of the leaders of Europe who now feel betrayed and lied to or at least outed and lied about. <laughs> sentence. I want to say a word about torture. Ow. We know that torture, Ow is right. We know that torture has now become part of American policy. We know that. And, and almost everyone is outraged by it. Republican congressmen are outraged by it. But here is the thing that, that just sort of bothers me. 
I'm in the city of Chicago. Everybody here from Chicago or its environments, you know, environments, we've been torturing people in police stations in this town for generations. Why should this come as a shock to us? Uh, we have to stop torture not only in Abu Ghraib, and not only in Guantanamo, and not only at the secret prisons, but also in Area 4, and Area 5, and Area 2. And it's time that we say, enough is enough. Stand up and be heard. Do not be silent. We cannot be silenced. The Bush administration and his advisors have secretly intercepted our phone calls, they've read our emails without probable cause, without court order, without law, in fact, against the law. Bush is spying upon us. And we can't be silent about that. Enough is enough. It's time for our voices to be heard and heard loudly because our collective voices will drown out the voice of the tyrant. A few last thoughts tonight. What is the rationale for all of this? What's the rationale for torture, secret prisons? What's the rationale for this ridiculous war? What's the rationale for taking Iraq and causing a civil war within that country? What's the rationale for spying on Americans? What's the rationale for the Bush administration's post 9-11 plans? The rationale, at least the express rationale, is security. Security. Halliburton trickle down, but they don't say that. They say security. In this week's in this week's New Yorker, uh, September 11, 2006, New Yorker, they quote John Lehman, who's a former secretary to the Navy under the Reagan administration, and a member of the 9-11 Commission. This is not uh, with all due respect, the revolutionary worker. Uh, this is mainstream American journalism. Uh, Lehman is not a radical uh, uh, lawyer. Uh, he's uh, the former secretary of uh, the Navy for the Reagan administration. Here's what he says. The military occupation, this is in rebuttal to the notion that this nonsense creates a world of security. The military occupation of Iraq is consuming practically the entire defense budget and stretching the army to its operational limits. This, under, this understood quite clearly, this is understood quite clearly by both our friends and our enemies. And as a result, our ability to deter enemies around the world is disintegrating. Enough is enough. Stand up and be heard. Do not be silenced. Stand up October 5th. Come out October 5th. And make the Bush administration and the world hear our voice of protest. Resist. Refuse. Enough is enough.